With blood and rage of crimson red, ripped from a corpse so freshly dead, together with our hellish hate, we'll burn you all. That is your fate. This is Red Lantern Russell from Tomes of Evil. And you're listening to Sector 2814, a Green Lantern podcast. Hi, this is Phil, and I'm here to make sure you know all about the Capes and Lunatics Patreon. Don't miss out on all new episodes of Wade's World, Boob Windows and Long Boxes, our hard R movie reviews, and so much more, all completely uncensored. Access starts for as little as $1 a month, full videos when you pledge $3 a month. Check us out at the link in all of our show notes, or just go straight to patreon.com slash capesandlunatics. Hope to see you there. This is Luca Parrott, and you're listening to the Capes and Lunatic Sidekicks podcast. In brightest day, in blackest night, no evil shall escape my sight. But those who worship evil's might, beware my power. Green Lantern's light. Hello, and welcome back to another episode of Sector 2814, the Green Lantern podcast, episode 20, so we're about... Three and a half months of Emerald Twilight, I'm sorry. Anyway, I am Phil, joining me as always, Master of the Core it is. I am Will, hey everyone. And Master of the Green, just on at the uh, <laughs> Will it is. <laughs> this is Matt. Here I am. And why do I bring up the Goodwill? Well, it's simple. No, not him. No, the store. <laughs> He's a great will. I went to the Goodwill oh, store. Nice. I went through the DVD bins at the Goodwill store today. That's right. Because mm-hmm. yes, you started that conversation. I'm like, I want this on the record because what movie yeah. did you see? What movie were you not willing to spend three dollars and fifty cents on? <laughs> well, I love looking at the DVDs because you know a lot of people don't like physical media anymore. I, I still dig it, and yeah. so I wanted to see if I could get any uh, anything for cheap or something that's like hard to find. And uh, I actually got uh, a copy of Dogma on DVD, which has kind of uh, been out of print for a little, little while. It shot in Pittsburgh, that's why I mentioned that. And uh, I passed by a, a number of superhero ones, but one in particular as it relates to the podcast is the Ryan Reynolds film Green Lantern. 349, just a little bit too much for me. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah, I had uh, opined that you know, the cast really was great on that movie. Yeah. It just was. Uh, I mean, you had the writing. Sinestro the writing. was perfect. I mean, it just <laughs> was awesome. Um, and, you know, and Ryan Reynolds, I think, made a good Hal. It's just the, the writing and part. Of, I, I I don't know anything, but I kind there's, of there's my I, job. I, yeah, I don't know anything. I never know anything. I kind of feel like that's that's oh, on no, Jeff Johns. Drops. You know, as much as I love what he did for you know Green Lantern with Three Birth on, you know, and Blackest Night and all that stuff, that just that movie seems like it was interfered with. You know, the, I I don't have any yeah. take no. one way or the other, but it just ugh. I could see it just because just for what we got final product and the air it came out. Yeah, I could see a lot of suits interfering there. It's just and again they fall into the trap. It's like oh well, we can't just have one villain. You know you got They had to do Hector Hammond. Then they had to jump right to Parallax. It's like no no no. Yeah. That's not at the beginning of Hal's journey. No. <laughs> yeah. And it's like all these and- see all these seasoned veteran Green Lanterns couldn't take out Parallax. So yeah, no one else thought that you know do what Hal did at the end. It's like okay. Okay, yeah. I mean, and you know, Kilowog looked awesome, sounded awesome. I mean, that was, I think, Michael Clark Duncan, right? Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. Perfect casting. It's kind of yeah, cool. Yeah, I mean, yeah. you had Tomar Ray. I mean, all of the... I did not necessarily like the animated suits. <laughs> but, uh, you know, I, I could have overlooked that if the story would have been there, but that, there was just... Yeah, I just... And I don't think if they were trying... You know, it's not like, hey, we're going to take a risk and, you know, shoot for the fence. I think it failed because they were trying to play it way too safe. Oh, yeah. Hot Wheels Got track. It. Come on. Yeah. I mean, yeah. <laughs> so very disappointing. I remember taking the boys to that and we were like, ugh, so wanted it to be good. 
And it's yeah. <laughs> I know. I think I went with my wife. I was just like, I'm sorry. <sighs> yeah. <laughs> It's, it's always a tough part when you're the one that talks it up or gets hyped up the most. And then you, you don't want to have to admit that you're wrong because you had no, you know, it wasn't your fault. You yeah. didn't know. Just like, well, I thought that maybe they could have. Mm. Or, yeah. <laughs> or even like, you know, back in 1997, I went with a bunch of friends to see Batman and Robin. And, you know, everyone was like, oh, that movie was OK. I'm like, no, it wasn't. Let me tell you why it wasn't. Well, okay. <laughs> yeah. Bat nipples. Come on. <laughs> yeah. Clooney D. Well, you know, one movie. thing one thing the Green Lantern movie did give us was the Green Lantern animated series, mm. which is very good. Oh yes, yeah, so I hear I hear the music that is pretty great. Uh huh. Yeah, so it is. Lining. Soundtracks are pretty awesome. Volumes one and two. Yeah. Very good. So hopefully, <laughs> I, I mean, yeah, hopefully HBO Max gets it right. The Green Lantern. Hopefully, fingers crossed. Yeah, I'm I'm cautiously optimistic. I mean, because there's. Lots of ways you can do Green Lantern and still have it be, you know, awesome. Yeah. You know. And we got the, uh, like, I don't know if it's a full trailer or a teaser for uh, Star Girl Season 2 this week. And, uh, yes, Jade, this daughter of Alan Scott, was in there. So With a lantern, it looked like. Oh, yeah. That picture. Oh, yeah. Because <laughs> oh, yeah, Star Girl has, like, a bunch of the old stuff from the JSA. So they had the, they showed in the first season, she had the lantern. So, yeah. So, so I'm guessing she doesn't have the internalized powers. I'm guessing, what, is she probably going to use yeah. Alan's ring or whatever? I don't know. <laughs> I guess we'll find out. <laughs> and and that, I think that debuts in September. I think it's August, I, I believe. <laughs> oh, okay. I just wonder, they might have even pushed it back, because last year it was during the summer. It might have been like June or July, but I think because all those CW shows are delayed because they didn't start till like February. They usually yeah. start in uh, <laughs> September Octo- or October. But uh, yeah, they said uh, next season on the Flash, like the first five episodes, are gonna do a bunch of like like team ups. Cause, like uh, they said, they already talked talking to the guy from Black Lightning. So, oh, cool, very cool. So who knew? Well, we're watching Crisis right now. Uh, we're oh yes, I, just told, in. I watched I watched <laughs> the whole thing. I rewatched the whole thing again this weekend. Yes, Crisis on Infinite Earths. Yeah, I, I'm not. Uh, not a huge fan of, uh, of Batwoman at this point. <laughs> I think it's the show. Yeah, I, I don't know if it's the show or well. That, well no, I, I mean, I like I like some of the actors in it, but I, I, Batwoman is just not that convincing to me. So, I mean, the new Batwoman, I, I'll have to give that a shot. So, okay, yeah. well, I was gonna say, yeah, you're in season one of Bat- Batwoman. Yeah, that was so weird. Well, again, too, I don't think they did that any service where it's like, you know, they threw a crossover in the middle of her first season and, you know. Yeah. <laughs> uh, here, I was just looking up when season two of Stargirl starts. Uh, I'm pretty sure it's uh, I saw August. Uh, and we've got. Let's see. Yeah, because we're we're having August. to do Crisis before we do the next season of uh, Legends. No, which is, <laughs> Legends is kind of strange. Uh, like it gets trippier the, the further you go. Yeah, so you're not done with Crisis yet? No, not yet. We just got uh, we watched the Supergirl episode and the Batwoman. Mm. So we still got oh, wait to get the Green Arrow, Flash, mm-hmm. and Legends, which is the last. Yeah, part Flash of it. is part three. I'll wait to get to that. It's so great. Oh. <laughs> uh yeah, August tenth for Star Girl season two. Awesome. Uh oh, okay. I know, I know. We should you know, it's a DC characters and stuff, but uh did you guys watch the first episode of Loki yet? I did. Yes. <laughs> I was on I was on top of it this time. Nice. Yeah, next one's <laughs> I, I was yeah. constantly in the weeds with the uh, Falcon and Winter Soldier, but uh I I did make I made time to watch Loki. Oh, nice. <laughs> <laughs> At least you didn't vary, right? No, no. <laughs> you know, it's funny because I always try to stay spoiler free for stuff that I know that I'm going to be watching anyway. Mm-hmm. But uh, someone sent me a link because, like, the Disney store was having their twice annual sale. So I was just looking through stuff to maybe get uh, my daughter or my wife and there was like all these time variant authority t-shirts and things like that so i was like 
oh, okay, something's going on. And uh, I knew Loki was traveling through time. Didn't know he was going to get <laughs> nabbed right away. But uh, there you go. I did read that um, Owen Wilson's mustache was deep nerdery uh, as a tribute to Mark Greenwald. Yes. Oh, yeah, because didn't they base the uh, original look of all those TV agents on Grunewald? Yes. Yeah, Simonson, uh, Walter Simonson did, and I think they quote him in the article, too, that I read. So, yeah, that was I thought that was really cool. Yep, I did, too. I really liked that aspect of it. But, I mean, are they just teasing us? Because, I mean, just uh, between the timekeepers who uh, didn't they, uh, weren't they behind uh, Mortis in the comics? And you kind of, one of them, this was pointed out to me, I did not notice it. Yeah. I love the little cartoon introducing it. Um, that yes. Was awesome. But apparently in the cartoon, one of the timekeepers looks like Kang. Yeah, that's, what, that's what people are saying. Oh. Yeah. Um, but, but, and we know but, Kang, but, but, you know, but remember, everyone knew that the Mephisto was going to be in one division too, Will. So. Yeah. <laughs> right. Well, that's true. And, you know, Kang is interesting because, you know, it goes Ramatut. Kang, then Immortus, you know, that's yeah. the same, same guy, right? And uh, wasn't there a, it uh, wasn't like an alternate version of him. It was the, from the Squadron Supremes. He was the Scarlet. Um, Centurion, was it Scarlet Centurion? I think Scarlet Centurion, yeah, yeah, I think so. And then, and then uh, like the first Young Avengers story, there was like a young Kang kid, was like Iron Lad. He's like, oh, I'm never going to yeah. become a villain. But then, yeah, then he's like, they're like, you got to go he's back. He totally becomes a villain. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I mean, <laughs> and then the, the, what's that? What was that little uh, mascot thing? Was it Miss Minutes or something? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, we need to put a clock face on Kona. Matt Minutes. I said, Yeah. <laughs> I'm often minutes late to the stream, so it works. Uh, you know, it's it was a, what a thirty minute episode, right? And there was no. Was, I think it was a little bit longer, yeah, right? I think it was, it was like, like around 40, forty. Yeah, I think it was a forty-five or a little more. Yeah. Are they going to kind of come in, clock in about? Pardon the pun. <laughs> I mean, I mean, I think that, that's about what Falcon Winter Soldier was, wasn't it? Around like forty-five to fifty minutes, I thought. I yeah, so. I think was, and some were like closer to an hour too. I think so. Yeah, yeah, it was like a and they structured it a lot differently too because it was like one big six hour movie. Mm -hmm. Whereas I think they're kind of leaning more into the episodic. At least it seems that way for Loki. It's you know like this is an episode. It's a discrete yeah. thing. Here's another episode. It's a discrete thing. You know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, oh, did you did you see the name of the judge who he was in front of? Will. Uh, I did not notice it at the time, but uh, I did read about it later. So yeah, that's cool. <laughs> I'll let you go ahead and reveal it because I didn't notice it. Yeah, spoilers. Yeah, for, I didn't pick it up. Spoilers for Loki season one, kids. It was Ravana, uh, mm -hmm. you know, who Kang was all macking on. Yeah, which is uh, what was the crossover in the Avengers annual? Um, oh, when they went to Timely or whatever. Yeah, uh, she, because that. she was she showed up as kind of a oh, it was it's one of those uh, annuals with a card in it. I can't remember what it was. Some <laughs> vintage annual <laughs> that narrows it down. And yeah, a little bit maybe. <laughs> but yeah, she was she was Kang's love, and she I think she first showed up in his appearance in what was that Avengers seven or eight somewhere yeah, back in there I think so, in the original. Yeah. Well, that was his, yeah, wasn't it eight his first appearance or something? I think so. Nine, uh, it's been a while since I've checked all my Avengers facts, but nine was Wonder Man's first appearance. So I think eight was Kang. So maybe. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, there's a lot of good stuff. But then, you know, spoilers at the end, they're like, oh, you have to hunt down another version of yourself who we don't see, only uh -huh. like a cloaked figure. So I think the prevailing theory is that's uh, female Loki. Uh, and they also, uh, it was pointed out, I didn't catch it, that the uh, thing that was sticking in the ground, the weapon was from the third millennium. Mm. Who do we know that comes from the 30th century besides the Guardians of the Galaxy? Kang. <laughs> Is he 30th? I thought he, was, I thought he was 40th. Where was he 40th? I thought he was 30th, but I could be wrong. So we could I, I mean, I'm sure out. he's all over the timeline, too. <laughs> yeah. You know, which, and he's been in some really... Really, really good Avengers stories uh, yeah. during the Stern run. 
Okay. The, uh, okay, I checked. It. I checked. You try, <laughs> trying to hide your identity, but I know that's you, Power of Chad. It's one of Ray's boys. Uh, it's Earth so, X Loki with the horns. <laughs> no, <laughs> I was gonna say watch. It'll be like Owen. It'll be like a double of Owen Wilson or something. Yeah, <laughs> Luke Wilson. <laughs> No, he's, in the DC, he's in the DC universe. He's actually on Star Yeah, the, those universes, you can't cross those streams, man. You just can't cross those streams. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, what's, what's scarier than the TVA, Disney lawyers? <laughs> <laughs> you know, um, trying to think back to some of the, I mean, you know, there was Kang and Immortus had, a, had kind of a storyline when Stern was writing the Avengers. But yeah. then um, right after Heroes Reborn, you know, the relaunch, or here, sorry, Heroes Return. Uh, they did the Avengers Forever series, you know, yep. Brusiak, and I think Stern helped him out on that. And then uh, Carlos Pacheco was on the art. That was just awesome. I was thinking today, had Mortis Kang, Timekeepers. It had the works. <laughs> okay, there's one. I was thinking today. I want to like make up bingo cards for everyone for for like everybody on our podcast. Be like, okay. When so and so says this, and I think for the will card, one of the squares has to be he mentions he uh, Avengers Forever <laughs> <laughs> because it's awesome. <laughs> mention how Jordan or mentioned Avengers Forever, Cosmos in collusion. Imagine Quasar. <laughs> 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 so, all right. So Green Lantern. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Let's get into a different galaxy. <laughs> all right. So yes, tonight we're covering a. Green Lantern Mosaic 6, 7, and 8. Mm-hmm. All right. So the first one, Green Lantern Mosaic uh, number 6, November 1992. Step outside. <laughs> Who is that? Christopher Reeves? <laughs> Care to step outside, General? <laughs> uh, Raider Gerard Jones, of course. Penciler. Ooh, two pencilers. Trevor Scott and Chris Wozniak. Uh, two inkers. Romeo Tangle. Gary Yap. Uh, colorist Steve Mattis, Matson, letters Albert the Guzman, editors Kevin Dooley and Eddie Berganza. Ooh, I'm surprised that Yap didn't write the script of the dialogue. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I was reading one of the upcoming mosaics, not one of these, and there was it was really wordy, and I was like, man, modern comics are, never does this anymore. <laughs> yeah, it was almost like a it was almost like a Claremont X Men. <laughs> I don't know. Read the letters pages. Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> Talk about wordy. Ugh. Well, they had to defend, but, uh, they had to defend the clip, you know, though, which there's some good to... stuff in there that we should catch up to after we finish the issues. Uh, okay. Yeah. There's yeah. some good discussion to be yeah, had. You were telling me some about that. All right. So issue <laughs> six. Uh, Kilwog calls in John Stewart to lecture the new recruits for the Green Lantern Corps on the subject of discipline. Uh, John suggests that rather than teach the new recruits cooperation and tolerance, he should redirect their violence and anger in such a way that the Corps continues to stand as a unit, despite the fact that the members don't get along. John performs a mind scan on Boudica and Creon, the two new lanterns who get along the least. (laughs) He places them on an alternate plane of reality where he forces them to fight their fears. Budika fears men in their chains of reason, while Creon fears strong, sexually aggressive women. Just give in. Both find, yeah. themselves, both find themselves entrapped by their fears, and John warns that they will die if they cannot defeat their fear. Eventually, they call on each other for help, ca- claiming that they both could easily defeat the other's foe, so they try it. After coming out of it, the two realize, as John states, that they depend on each other to fill in the blanks in their lives. Budika even flirts with Creon to the extent that they leave that they leave the earshot of the rest of the core. Um, uh, okay. Uh, uh. Well, he, he's from Mars and she's from Venus, right? Is that what they're trying to tell us? <laughs> I mean, the Mars sector and the Venus sector. <sighs> I missed you, Kona. Uh, <laughs> But Killwalk yeah, I, lo- I love how they're not stereotyping there at all. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Killwalk thanks John for his efforts and prepares to present the new recruits to the Guardians of the Universe, and John decides to go back to work on the mosaic. All right. Matt Kona, thoughts on sexually aggressive women? Uh, uh well. <laughs> well. 
in, in comic books. Uh, very. Uh, <laughs> it is the night. I, li- I like to watch. No. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, it seems like a lot of these issues. I mean, especially like the upcoming ones too. It's like we're really like either looking in the John's head or someone else's head in a lot of these. Mm-hmm. Like he's that. Like Jones yeah. is like, or no. uh yeah, Gerard Jones. Yeah, he's doing like real deep dives on like people's psyches and stuff. Yeah. You know, I I thought it was interesting that uh, John was just so blase. Oh, if they can't beat the, their fears, they're just going to die. You know, Kilowog was like, whoa, <laughs> that's not cool, bro. <laughs> yeah. I know. And it's, but it it's, worked. Is it just like because the old timer is kind of still in his head somewhat or Sinestro is in there or, <laughs> you know, what we get at the end of this series? Well, was that I mean, the nice little stew of it's like, why is John Stewart really like locked away from his feeling? <laughs> and I mean, just I don't know. I, I, I want to drug test on John Stewart. I mean, <laughs> remember, you know, for issue one of Green Lantern until now, I mean, <laughs> he's really put on some yeah. muscle tone, you know. He's he's yeah. bulked up a bit. Yes, that's true. <laughs> yeah. But you know, Mosaic is not like any other book, at least in my opinion, that DC was putting out at the time. Oh, no, no, it no, looked no. it looked different. It read different. It really was different. Now, what the writer was doing, I don't know if he was one hundred percent successful or not, but. It was different. Oh, it was yeah. really different. So this is probably your first time reading this, right, Matt? Yeah, it definitely was. Yeah, what do you think? Um, I, I don't know. I, I mean, I it, I got to kind of reacclimate myself to, to this world. I, I like the concept of it, and it's, uh, it's, it's a long story to tell, so obviously there's going to be little... Uh, uh, side roads along the way. So I think this is this issue in particular is one of them. And you see him uh, and his leadership skills going in a creative way to get these two people to work together and uh, work against their own inner demons and, and fears. So uh, I thought, it, I thought it was cool. I don't know. It, it rates higher amongst the, uh, the issues that we're going to discuss today than uh, the others. We'll, we'll get to that, but so far, so good. I remember the, I remember the illusionary uh, uh, antagonist here, kids. Mama Dentata and the Chain Men. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. do, do you guys... I mean, I find it interesting. I don't know if anybody else does, because you know, I'm not right, but he, it, uh, it kind of continues the theme of Characters talking directly to us, the reader, mm. right? Mm-hmm. I mean, yeah. that's that's happened in the past, you know, issues before. Now it happens in this issue. They're breaking then, the fourth panel. Yeah. <laughs> what is it? With, I know space time looks like <laughs> at this point. At this point in time, what is it with green characters breaking the fourth wall? Because didn't Burn have She Hulk like breaking the fourth wall at this point? Oh, I think so. Yeah. Yeah. So it's like if you're a green character, you could like break the fourth. Now it's all like Deadpool and yeah, you have to be a red character. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> and I feel like they want to do that with Harley Quinn sometimes, but I don't think she like breaks the fourth wall. Per, like any, I don't know if she ever did, but it's like they kind of almost wanted her to. But yeah, she did. They never took her full Deadpool. Yeah, <laughs> but it always seemed to me like they wanted to make Harley Quinn kind of like their Deadpool. Hmm. And you know, it's funny, the success of both of those characters is just crazy at this point. I oh, mean, oh, yeah. Can you believe Deadpool? Uh, uh, this is the 30th anniversary this year. Yeah, that's hard to wow. believe. I mean, <laughs> well, too, because it's like, I mean, if you were yeah. on X Force, I mean, you really didn't hear about Deadpool this first couple of years, too. I think that's why it sneaks up on you, yeah. too, because it's like, because he, he didn't get his own series until what was it, 1997 or 98, so. Yeah, and, he, and the first series he had was a limited series. I think what Wade, Mark Wade wrote it, and Joe Mattiero did the art. Maybe that was the second. Yeah, he had two. Well, he had two mini series. Yeah, that was that was the second one. Yeah, and then yeah, uh, yeah, then they gave him an ongoing. And then Joe Kelly took the 
did he start the ongoing or did he take over the ongoing? Because he did some really cool stuff with Deadpool. Yeah, no, Joe Kelly started it. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he was on there for like 20, 30 some issues. Yeah. And of course, and of course, kids, if the character like only with a character like Deadpool, can you get the uh, moment in twenty five when Captain America has been possessed by an alien? So uh, Deadpool tells you, "I'll Rochambeau you for it." And you know, <laughs> where else in comics will you see Captain America get kicked in the nuts? <laughs> <laughs> only in Deadpool. <laughs> uh, so. <laughs> any other thoughts on this one? Was there anything in this? I know you're talking about the letter column. Well, was there anything in this letter column? Um, one of these letter columns. Well, actually, the letter columns are all really interesting. Um, in this one, I think he maybe talks about some of the uh, less than flattering mail he's getting about bumping off Chip. Oh yeah, that is in this one. I'm looking at it now because <laughs> okay. he's like, because he's talking like the Jason Todd thing. He's like, if he had a 900 number to like kill off the. Uh, <laughs> Like the writer. Say, like, I wouldn't. This would be the last thing I'd write. And I don't know if it was this one or the next one. He talks a little bit about um, the Eclipso Annual, the Green Lantern Annual with Eclipso in it, because we. I know we've talked about that and how it was uh, a little cringeworthy in places. <laughs> oh, look at this! Uh, yeah, I'm looking at this letter call now. Yeah, people are yelling at him for killing off Chip and <laughs> too, but it's like. <laughs> But I think someone was complaining. I spent a a dollar twenty five of my hard earned money on this thing, and it's like, oh damn, I, I, dude, oh. don't go to the future. Stay where you are. I know. <laughs> oh, I miss those days. I miss the. Oh my god, I miss the days of a dollar. Oh man, uh, so I'll take a buck fifty. I mean, if, if you think about how long it takes an issue. Uh, to, or how long it would take to read an issue back then compared to now and the, the cover charge for present day comics. Oh man, it's like five pages of an old issue. I know. Say, they, yeah, yeah, they might. Yeah, I mean, again, it's like well, I always pick on Bendis, but it's like you know, you can get an issue of people just like standing around talking. Yeah, and in a nineties comic, that might be like two pages of the comic. You know, these days yeah. it's the whole thing. on to the action. <laughs> Uh, well, Bendis, I, Bendis, I will, Bendis. I'll show, I'll show my age here. I learned about economics the hard way. Um, I could get four comics for a dollar twenty. They were thirty cents each. Wow. I remember going to the stands yeah. when I was really, really young. Wow! And then they bumped them up to forty cents, and suddenly the four comics turned into three comics. <laughs> I was like, yeah. wait a minute. <laughs> What's going on here? <laughs> all right, uh, all right, and and for well, for me, it was I will not that old, but uh, yeah, I was I started. Well, no, I started collecting when it was like seven. It was like on the cusp of like going from like seventy five cents to a dollar, but that's before they taxed them. Mm-hmm. So it's like when they hit a dollar, it's like, hey, I want four comics. I just need four dollars. You know, <laughs> it's nice and easy. Then they started taxing the damn thing. Yeah. yeah. But kids, you can go any. Uh, I mean, we had like two or three newsstands around here. We had, you know, they were on spinner racks in the grocery store. Oh yeah, yeah that's I exactly. Got a, right. I got to hunt down a comic book store. Spinner racks in the drugstores. As, yeah. as all the young kids are yelling, or just buy them digitally. <laughs> Get off my lawn. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> all right, should we move along to the next one? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Kona's like, yeah, get, on, get us Move on. along home. <laughs> All right, let me find the link. Yeah, here, next one. Green Lantern, Mosaic number seven. December 1992, Ghost Dance. Uh, yeah, same writer. Penciler, Cull- Cully Hamler. Anchor, mm-hmm. Dan Panosian. Uh, Steve Matson, colorist. Yeah, same. Uh, letterer, editor. Uh, bu- 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 bu. A Native American reserve on the mosaic becomes consumed by a need to drum and dance. The activities draw the attention of Frankie and Kelly, who watch with interest for three days. Eventually, the music is interrupted by the creatures known as the clergy birds, a meditative philosophical species. The rhythms of the drums disrupt their meditation and has the strange side effect that the species known as glad girls are killing the clergy birds. That's right, kids. Get uh, get whatever mind, birds. get whatever mind altering substance you like, kids. Uh, you might need. Here we go. <laughs> yes. 
When the birds ask the natives to stop, they are threatened with guns, and Frankie and Kelly are forced to use their green lantern rings to intervene. They call John Stewart, who angrily warns them not to argue religion on his mosaic. <laughs> <laughs> he grabs representatives from both parties and takes them to see the Glad Girls. When he arrives, he catches the girls in the act of killing one of the clergy birds, but when he tries to catch them, they are gone. When John encounters strange creatures, he calls twittering machines, dance twittering machines. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, he realizes that the source of the call for music is something other than the native reserve. Uh, the, uh, wait, uh, the twittering machines. Yeah, I hear that he won't talk to the former president. <laughs> uh, he finds himself unable to control the urge to dance and sing. Fortunately, he is rescued by one of the clergy birds who have trained their minds to ignore rhythm. Uh, the source seems to be a field of reeds. Uh, clergy bird trained their mind to ignore rhythm. What are they, white people? <laughs> At a wedding. Oh, during, <laughs> during the electric slide, yeah. <laughs> that night, John calls on the spirit of the old timer, who remains embedded in the Green Lantern psyche. He begs the spirit to tell him about the music, but the old timer mocks him and fills his mind with all the knowledge of a former guardian. Hmm, knowledge of a guardian, you say? Hmm. John is overwhelmed, but tries to focus on pulling just one thing from the many. The next morning, John calls on Frankie and his friends to watch his back. And Frankie says, hey, relax. <laughs> uh, while he returns to the reed field, he assumes that there is some sentience that is creating the music. He enters the field and begins to sing. By letting the music into his mind, John encounters a race of beings made of sound that he calls the Tone Men. He dubs their home Melody Land. John begins a conversation with the Tone Men through lyrics and song, which conveys the negative effects of the music. The Tone Men stop urging the natives to drum, and the Glad Girls stop killing the clergy birds, and everyone is in harmony again on the mosaic. <laughs> Yay, happy ending. Ish, except for the one that, you know. Well, happy ending for the mosaic. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right, kids, what did you think? Oh, well, basically, I, I like the artwork. I thought the cover was really cool. And the opening splash page is uh, disturbing to have a little girl with the uh, impaled chicken, <laughs> clergy bird, whatever, Howard the Duck kind of rip off and uh, being murdered. And it, but it, I thought that, you know, you made a, I didn't want to tip my joke in advance, but you were talking about drug testing Jon Stewart. I think you might have to test him for LSD in this one because it, it just <laughs> seems like he's, uh, I mean, it's a, it's a, with him dancing and uh, singing all the songs in his head, it's, it's sort of like, what do you call it when you, you get the, uh, when you get a song stuck in your head and you're, it's driving you insane, uh, it seems like this, but it, a lot more visually stimulating with with the, some semblance of a plot, peacekeeping plot uh, spread throughout. <laughs> but um, yeah, like the art, it was some real weird kind of funny stuff, especially with Streisand, of course, makes its way in there. Uh, of course. I, I know some lyrics. I don't, I don't know. I don't celebrate her whole catalog, but you get more into, <laughs> you get more into Streisand in the, the following issue. But uh, yeah, I don't know. It, it was a it was a weird one, definitely. So, so, uh, so what are you saying? We get to meet new kinds of aliens, really strange uh, <laughs> rivals, bet rivalries between them, though. So. So, so what are you saying, Koda? Are you, are you to sum up this issue? Can we say the rhythm is going to get you? The rhythm is going to get you. <laughs> yeah, the rhythm. Yeah. <laughs> but I mean, yeah, I mean, just go ahead, Will. I had a thought. I lost it. <laughs> it's just out there. I mean, it. Or bird is the word. <laughs> bird, bird, bird. Yeah. bird is the word. You know it. It seemed like it took one of the kids to remind him that, you know, you, you, you still need to, you know, discover these things. You, know, you still need to go out and, and try to find things out. And, and 
yeah, the rest of it's just kind of Tuesday on the mosaic, right? <laughs> and again, I have no knowledge either way. So both of you guys, I'd, I'd like your opinion. Do you, I mean, do you think they did the Streisand thing just to make John different or was like, Gerard uh, Jones or one of them like a fan of Streisand and just wanted to throw it in or what? I think he I think it gets into his conception of John as um, He's he's multi-layered <laughs> Yeah but I think he's trying to bridge that racial gap yeah. by saying that you know John loves Streisand which is you know, typically considered you know white right and, and I don't know I don't know if the collection of things that he, he kind of throws onto John make for a complex character or just make for lots of things thrown on John. Do you you know, th- I, I don't know. I mean, that is that an example of just, do you think Jar Jones was trying too hard to be, just be like, look, he's not a typical black man. He does not listen to the rap music and, you know. Yeah, I, I don't know. I mean, it's it's hard to say when, when he's writing about race. Yeah, sorry. I, he, I mean, a lot of these issues, it seems like he's trying to talk about the black experience, but this is a white guy. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I mean, it's, it, 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 it lacks, I feel like it lacks some authenticity, you know? Yeah, I'm just, uh, every time I read something like that, one of these, I'm just like, oh, where are you pulling this from? <laughs> you know? Yeah. I mean, is it just something you've read then? And uh, yeah, a book, or did you talk to people? I don't know. Yeah, it, it's just... It's strange. <laughs> it, it adds to the strangeness of these issues. Could, too, I think. could they do this today? Could a white could a white writer do this today? Um, I think it would be. Or would people just be like, "Oh, you know, if you're going to do this, why don't you just have a black writer do it?" Well, I think two things. I think as a writer, you should be able to write any character. Oh yeah, right? definitely, definitely. But also, if you're going to make it a point to address issues about you know race or sexism or things like that mm-hmm. then you really are probably writing outside your experience if you're a straight white dude right so you know if, you, if, if the point of the story is going to be something along those lines maybe it's not your story to tell and you know I'm not, it's not a hard and fast rule yeah, I mean, no, we've no. got great we've got great stuff by lots of people you know, of, of, you know all kinds of different backgrounds but and, and it, it would be different if, like, he did it, like, once or twice, but it, se- it like, as you keep going to Mosaic, it seems like he keeps coming back to he the comes issue back of race. To it, yeah. exactly. <laughs> and I, I don't know. I, it's, since that is really kind of an underlying theme and kind of a driving force behind this, it, it just doesn't seem like he's the best equipped to tell that story for this character. I mean, unless he just wanted to be different since he's writing everything Green Lantern at the moment. <laughs> exactly. <yeah. laughs> right. All the Green Lanterns. Even Justice League Europe. So, I mean, we're looking at um, from Green Lantern, Emerald Dawn, because he wrote, what, like the last three issues of Emerald Dawn and then all of Emerald Dawn 2 or something along those lines, which was in, what, 90? Or approximately? Yeah, something like that. So for like four years... If a Green Lantern appears somewhere, odds are he wrote the story, right? Yeah, and that, <laughs> I, I wonder if that was that contributed to the fall of Hal Jordan eventually. Well, I mean, we'll get there, but it's like because you only had one voice writing everything Green Lantern. Mm-hmm. I mean, now we're up to three regular Green Lantern. You know, if you count Guy Gardner, three regular Green Lantern books. You know, he's writing Justice mm-hmm. League Your Europe. It's like maybe if we had at least one other voice in here. Yeah, yeah, and yeah, we get a little of that in the core quarterly, but it's it's but, stuff that's really off to the side, you know, that doesn't really impact the you know, anything that impacts the ongoing yeah. Green Lantern title is something that he has his hand in, basically. Because it's it's you know with the different books, it's like oh everyone can have their cake and eat it too, but it's like oh well, yeah, but it, it all tastes the same because the same guy's writing it. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> you're serving it from <laughs> you're the one serving it up. <laughs> Yeah. I mean, it's. I really do kind of think his creative control, whatever you want to call it, his his creative control of Green Lantern probably did ultimately lead to Emerald Twilight. 
I mean, I really do think that I don't think we could argue too uh, well that it didn't because you're right. It was one, the same person writing these different characters. And then ultimately it all just kind of blew up. Right. I, I, yeah. Cause I, I mean, as we'll see, you know, the first story once he's done is boom, Emerald Twilight. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Well, <laughs> and you know, even, I think even, uh, bring some behind the scenes stuff. Wow. This is a long time ago. I think that no matter what, come 50, Hal was going to not be Green Lantern. He was going to be elsewhere, doing something else, you know, again, kicked out of the core, which how many times are they going to do that story, but whatever. Um, and they decided to, you know, for whatever reason, to uh, to nuke the the kind of the franchise from orbit. Oh, yeah, just, <laughs> to, to, borrow, to borrow an alien's just, quote. Just burn, yeah. it all, just burn it all down. Just be like one guy, yeah. one ring. Okay, we'll, we'll, re, re, well, we'll rebuild from here. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right. Any other thoughts on seven before we get to eight? Um, no. I mean, just, I don't know. The, the question you answered about whether, you know, like a white writer can tell like a black story or, or vice versa. Yeah. I, I think that's kind of, I mean, yeah, there's always going to be people that, that has an opinion on it right away. But I mean, I mean there, there's so many instances of comic book creators inheriting characters and they're mm-hmm. not, you know, it, you can't. It feels it would feel weird to assign them because oh Luke Cage is black so we need a black mm-hmm. writer or Captain America is white so only white people can write it like it sounds <laughs> much worse in the reverse role but I don't I don't know I mean it, I think that the conversation about uh, race is a lot more prevalent in everything in this day and age mm-hmm. much more so than it was in the nineties I mean there was yeah. just the character was like that so you write about it. it's like I mean. You're right, a movie has male and female characters in it. Every movie doesn't have to be co-written by two people of either gender. So, I don't know. It's a longer, yeah. con- it's a longer, more nuanced conversation, but that's oh, just yeah. my uh, uh, surface reaction to it. Yeah, and I think it comes down to really kind of the point of the story, too. I mean, if you're going if, if to have yeah. characters addressing things specifically around, you know, racism or... You know, misogyny or any of those things, yeah. then it becomes, I think, more important to have an authentic voice as opposed to just simply utilizing a character and being true to that character, but not necessarily addressing you know underlying societal problems and things like that. I mean, it. Mm-hmm. I feel like it comes down to the aim of the story, but that's that's just my take on it. Yeah, I like that take. And it's just like, I mean, ever since, well, again, back then, ever since the Action Comics Weekly, it just seems like they just put poor John through the ringer, you know, first they kill his wife, you know, then they, you know, they make him the angry black man. Now he's like 20 voices in his head. And, yeah. And, you know, to give credit where I think some credit is due, it's, you know, the writer is taking that character and trying to do something with a lot of those things that you know, have happened to the character. So, you know, he's, there's, there's some good things here. I, I still feel like there's an, an inauthentic authenticity to some of the things that, you know, he has the character say, and, you know, that he puts the character through yeah. for various reasons, but yeah. that's just me. Yeah. I, and I think <laughs> once he returns, uh, like in dirt one cows, it, you know, it's Kyle's book. I think, it, yeah, John Stewart's back to greatness, but, Mm-hmm. All right, all right. Should we get to the last one? Let's do it. Yes. <laughs> all right. Green Lantern Mosaic number eight, January nineteen ninety three. Nineteen ninety four is fast <laughs> approaching. Will all right. It's very quickly approaching. <laughs> uh, it looks like the same creative team as the last issue. <laughs> Low riders in the sky. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> Lord. Uh, Oh, nice! Oh, but be- before you, before you jump into it, uh, Cully Hamner is still an artist for DC. He's uh, still doing a lot of good work. Uh, and Dan Panosian, uh, the anchor, is now. I think he was nominated for an Eisner this year for cover work, for some of his cover work. So we've got some really good creators on the book, really early in their career. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I was gonna- rookie, these are like the rookie cards. For, uh- oh, yeah. 
All right, yeah, I was going to say, I got a big long synopsis here. John Stewart has to deal with a conflict between the Trendoids and the humans they have been imitating. That's it. That was a long synopsis. <laughs> yes, that long synopsis. Yes. I was I was settling in to be read a story by by I, I Uncle know. Phil here, and, and yeah. yeah. I gonna, thought I, I thought it was going to be a complicated and uh, nuanced <laughs> breakdown of the uh, the you know gang culture and trying to infiltrate <laughs> young kids and and, yeah. and and more like race talk. I mean, you know, I like we, it, we glanced over a little bit with the uh, the. The previous issue, I feel like they really dig their heels into the conversation on this one. But well, I guess the, uh, the the synopsis writer was taking a pass on this one, taking a powder. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like some of these websites are like hit or miss with these issues. I'm gonna have to see if there's like a Green Lantern centric uh, website because I know like when me and Will through Daredevil, we found like a man. What was it? Man without fear dot net or something. And yeah, uh-huh. like that guy has like a lot of like good synopsis on there. Yeah, and he has a Braille version, too. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> I did not see that one coming, Co- Co- oh, <laughs> Wow. I'm going to have to up my game. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so. What did you? What did we think of this one? Uh, the trend is uh, basically, I mean, they're, they're attacking, like, these gang members, but I guess they... They think they're going to make friends by imi- trying to imitate all these different cult, you know, like Earth cultures and stuff. Well, this one was a li- a little bit more goofy with a, a little bit more cringe to it. Yeah. But um, <laughs> and, and the the fact that they're called the Trendoids and they <laughs> imitate and take pleasure in their uh, experience in imitating all these different alien culture aliens and cultures and people of all walks of life throughout the galaxy and it's immortalized in ha- having a like they have photo books of or <laughs> their like resume to show off to, to john stewart uh but it, it's just more of like uh this was an episodic tv show you know sort of like the monsters of the week but you know john stewart he's got to keep the peace and he's dealing with a different problem all the time and so this one you know they they try to focus more on the the urban denizens of uh the mosaic that are trapped in there to uh try to keep peace amongst them and amongst the aliens you know, you know. but the, but it gets it to him more personally you know him talking about how they feeling like although it was weird because like they they reference something uh, uh, sort of as being an, an uncle tom but they don't say uncle tom they say uncle clarence for some reason but uh, uh is that clarence i was thinking that was that clarence thomas i That's think that might have been a reference to clarence oh thomas. okay all right so there you go but it kind of it, i guess it works both ways but um yeah because wasn't the, he, weren't the clarence thomas hearings around this time i think so maybe, it's, maybe i'd have to look it up to be sure but i mean it's it seems yeah. to kind of fit in my Sup- supreme, supreme, controversial Supreme Court judge appointee. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, I think that definitely was around this time in the mid nineties. If my knowledge of watching Saturday Night Live around that time is <laughs> any indicator, exactly, that's pretty yeah. spot on. Yeah, as played by Tim Meadows. Yeah. Yes. Kona <laughs> so, uh, just stayed up for Opera Man. I did. I did. <laughs> And Nancy Kerrigan hosted that. Well, it was 94, but yeah, around that time. Yeah. Yeah. I was Local. Just, I, was just, I was just looking. Uh, the, the, such a peer. If you count the uh, inside uh, of the front and back cover and the back cover, 1992, we had six ads in this for video games. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Man, you never see ads for video games anymore. And. And you know what's selling, kids. You know you know what the big event is because this page, Superman video game for your Sega Genesis. <laughs> turn yeah, the page. Say on, Kryptonite not included. <laughs> yes. Yeah. And then right on the back of that page, turn the page. Get your Death of Superman trading cards. <laughs> yeah. So what was the big event of '92? I don't know. Uh, I wonder what it was. Maybe something to do with Superman. I don't know, man. <laughs> But yeah, this one is is really goofy. It's just you know. 
So, so I guess these trendoids just, well, that's, you know, the, the trendoids just try to assimilate, well, they're not bored. Into whatever, to, into whatever click or group that they find, it looks like. Yeah, yeah. It is. And they kind of look like Coneheads, and the Conehead movie was out around this time, too. <laughs> great that may have been. <laughs> but they're gray, man, yeah. We come from Oa. <laughs> But yeah, it's like those yeah. kids in high school, you know, try to dress like the cool kids. And... Yeah. Yo, I'm just like you guys. <laughs> What's up, fellows? Fellow young, <laughs> young people. people. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I see you, Sammy. <laughs> uh, but at least John didn't give try to give them green lantern rings like them kids. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> yeah. Although they did dress like they tried, did start. To, Dress like him. Dressy like him, yeah. <laughs> <sighs> yeah. So, so of, was, of, of the three, it kind of, I don't this know. This is the I, weakest I one of the three. Yeah. Issue six so in terms of what I, uh, in, there were elements of each that I that I liked, but in, overall, I probably like that one. The best of the three. Felt more Green Lantern, most Green Lantern-ish to me. Yeah. yeah. Well, and we are nearly halfway through the series. I mean, that was issue eight. This thing ends at 18. Mm-hmm. So, Like I said, uh, there's only going to be like two or three more episodes. I, I have a, at least two episodes. The last two of Mosaic, yeah, I got a bunch packed into those. But, uh, yeah, so, I mean, Matt, long, long ago, long far away, ago. you know, probably eight months ago, six months ago. Yeah. Uh, we said that uh, Mosaic is weird. Has it lived up to the hype? I, yes, yes, it has. Yes, it has. I didn't. I didn't know. I thought it would. It would be visually weird and kind of pocket dimensional or something. But, um, but yeah, there, it's the weirdness has expanded beyond my expectations. So, but nice. I'm enjoying. I'm enjoying it, and it's nice to to go the way that uh, you know all the. Props to Phil for the way that he structures the episodes. You know, you got a couple of guy guarders here, a little mosaic there, the occasional trade thrown in. It's uh, it's making it interesting to me because for those of you who don't know, I am the least familiar with the material and uh, not all of it. A handful of issues I have read in the past, so I'm experiencing this for the first time. Even though you guys may know how things pan out. Sometimes you might let a little something slip. I try to block my eardrums for it, but um, yeah, I'm enjoying that. I, li- I like a good weird, a good dose of weirdness, and there's plenty of '90s goodness in there too. So I'm enjoying. Well, I really that. like that we get to kind of experience it, you know, firsthand again through you, which is really yeah, cool because, yeah. You know, it's, it's been probably I probably haven't read some of these issues since they came out, mm-hmm. which is. A couple of years ago, right? Yeah. <laughs> Depending on the time you're listening to this, people could be listening yeah. to this, this podcast in 2027. So. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but yes, I'm glad we can be here for your first time, Kona. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> All right. So, should I give the kids their homework? Well, and us our homework? And, uh, yes. You bet. All right. So, <laughs> yes, next time. All right, Will, you've been waiting for it. The third law from Green Lantern 32 through 35. Awesome. What's, we get what? to find out that the Guardians maybe aren't as cuddly little blue guys as <laughs> we think they are. They're, they're keeping a secret. And why are they keeping that secret? I don't know. Uh, Might have something to do with the law? The third law? Uh, <laughs> and then in two weeks, we're going to get Christmas in, uh, Christmas in the summer, kids, because... We're going to get Green Lantern 36, which is the Christmas issue, and Green Lantern Mosaic Ooh. 9 through 12, and uh, 9 is also a Christmas issue. So, And nice. which Christmas issue are you saying is so goofy? Because oh, I don't Green, remember. Green Lantern 36, Dr. Light, that's all I'll say. Okay, I'm, I'm, I don't remember that issue. I'm, I'm looking forward to it now. <laughs> oh, Hal and Carol go to visit Hal's, you know, his brothers, his sister-in-laws. Oh, oh just wait. Just wait. <laughs> I'm surprised you blocked this out of your mind, Will. I thought you'd be like, yeah, I remember that. <laughs> All, right. all right, kids. So, yeah, send your thoughts on all of those. Third law next week, and then uh, Christmas in two weeks. 
Although we we Christmas. give you joy every every week. So uh <laughs> please send us your thoughts. Email us capes and lunatics at gmail.com or call the voicemail 614-382-2737. That's 614-38CAPES. Oh, do they have a thing a way to put like a countdown clock on like a Facebook page or something? Because I just want to count down the Emerald Twilight for a little. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, um, you can grab an image. Mm. There's a, there's a, uh, I'll, after the show, okay. I think I may have a link for you. So cool. All right. All right, kids. And yes, and yeah, please, yes. Uh, if I could get this, you, you could find it on Facebook. So follow Sector 2814 on Facebook, Twitter. Uh, find links to all of our various social medias for all the various shows. Links to this uh, YouTube channel. See uh, Babyface Kona. In clear HD quality. Uh, go check out the Patreon channel. More, more, more things coming happening there. Links to merchandise. Links to everything all in one place. That's Linktree, L A N K T R dot E E slash Capes and Lunatics. And please remember to support everything Southgate Media Group. Go check out Southgate Media Group dot com. Uh, go check out the Southgate Media Group uh, Patreon. There's a bunch of free stuff there, like basically all the shows that are on the network now. And there's paid stuff too. Uh, so go support Southgate Media Group that way. Or uh, go buy Pod Life the book now, digital and paperback. And you can get that on Amazon. And when you do, use the link for Southgate Media Group right down there in the show notes. Help us support this show, the network, and that funky man with no rhythm, Raw Master Doom Southgate. Make it rain, so says Master Doom. Please kick me in the pants. <laughs> Mark my words. All right, Matt Kona, where can people find you uh, getting down to I, the rhythm? I, I can be fine uh, hanging out with the baby. Um, I have been reading comic books to her. Sometimes she reacts. Sometimes Ooh, nice. she uh, I mean, it depends on if she's just eating or not, how calm she is. <laughs> but uh, on social media, at Matt Kona, M-A-T-T-K-N-O-A, pretty much everywhere you can find I might be there. I might not be active, but you can message me if you want to. I'm around. See you later, Bunky. <laughs> all right. Will Allred, master of the core, master of the quantum zone, master of crossover division. Where can people find you and your books and your websites? And Well, uh, you can find me at Walred. That's at W-A-L-L-R-E-D. Uh, it's Gmail and Twitter and Facebook and all those places. Um, like Matt, I may not be active there, but you can message me. Uh, right now, my ongoing book is Crossover Division, which you can find at crossoverdivision.com. Number two will be launching in July, which is only a few short weeks away, um, which would be cool. Um, you can also find Diary of Night at diaryofnight.com. And uh, you obviously have great taste, so you probably love the character Quasar. So if you want to find out all kinds of cool stuff about Quasar, you go to uh, the Quantum Zone at quantumzone.org. I'll put it in my navel. Hey, you boys. You look at the party. I love the party. And here just for you, Will. He gives me his bone. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it almost makes the whole Guy Gardner four-issue series worth it just for that line. He gave me his bone. <laughs> <laughs> All right, kids. Thank you for joining us again. Come back next time for the third law. <laughs> Take those court shows there. There's nothing compared to this. It's hard for Trump. <laughs> and then Christmas in two weeks. <laughs> they got that. Keep threatening. I gotta do it. I gotta put uh, crossover division and uh, diary of night on, on the screen up there. <laughs> I gotta add it to the rotation. The covers. I, I, I've got some images for you, man. <laughs> I think I can get them. I just gotta do it. <laughs> Alright, kids. Come back next time. And remember beware of dancing trendwoods. <laughs> <laughs> I am Connor from the House of L. And I am Ray from the House of Zod. We are two of the many, many survivors of Krypton's destruction, and we have made our home in Australia, and dare I say have 
become Australians, for better or worse. But we have also decided to read Superman comics, uh, read Superman books, watch Superman shows, cartoons, movies, basically everything Superman, and from an Australian perspective as well. Whether you're a seasoned fan, like me, or whether you are coming in fresh, wide-eyed, and wanting to learn more like me, then this podcast is for you. Join us for our bi-weekly adventures available on all good podcast catches. So just search for Last Sons of Krypton, a Superman podcast. We'll be coming to you from Australia or some cosmic dimension, wherever we are that week. Up, 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 up and, and away! away.